mission statements for your home and submission. Are we still talking about submission? Yeah, in 2021. <laughs> On this segment of Two Divorced Guys. What's up, everyone? This is Sean Heineman here, and I'm in the house with Vince. What's up, Vince? What up, Doc? How you doing? Man, I'm great, man. Ready to jump into this topic on this, uh, dealing with this submission thing. I guess that word never plays out. And then also talking about mission statements for the home. Okay. I, I think this is something that's my, that might be new to a lot of people. But let me just go into... Uh, in reference to why I decided to address this topic. I was on Facebook the other day and I posted this in two marriage groups. The names will be anonymous. And the question was, and I was being honest, like this was coming from the heart. I wasn't trying to take any jabs or anything of that nature. Right. <laughs> I, I said, husbands, do you have a mission statement for your home? It's easier for a wife to submit when she knows the mission of her family. Now, first of all, with you seeing that, Vince, what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, a couple of things. Um, when, when you said, fellas, do you have a mission statement for your home, right? Um, we, in mission statements, we're usually exposed to, um, I would say, through work. The, like usually a job or a company will have a mission statement. If it's not work, it's probably um, a book you read. or So I, I would say either through work or church or, or unless you're in some type of organization like Boy Scouts or anything that has something you, some type of guideline there. So um, I understand mission statement because I was I, being in sales and network marketing, you read books like the uh, seven habits of highly affected people. And that's why I first really, I heard it before, but it wasn't until the book that I like paid attention to it. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, you I hear a mission statement at a job. I remember I worked at Walmart before they had their mission statement. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, it's kind of a, it, could, it just depends. Like it, it could be challenging to start because you ask the question, you say, for those that don't have a mission statement, it might feel like, oh shoot, you know, it, it, it it, 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 if the shoe fit, don't wear it type of thing, you know, like it, it would either provoke them to be, to look into it or say like, well, whatever. And then the whole, it's easier for a, a wife to submit to one. That That's a, you know, that's the thing too. And it, it could be argued that yes, it is. And then it could be say like, it, or, and then that's a, coming from a woman's perspective too, if she feel that way, if she wants to submit. But um, yeah, man, that, that's what my first thoughts on it. Mm. I'm cool with it because I, I understand purpose and vision and stuff. And I think it's smart, but yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that because you do understand you didn't take it as offensive. You automatically understood. Okay. I get it. Yeah. And, and I think because when I, when I posted this, it went crazy. Like there was all these comments, people were going off and I had more negative than positive, which was kind of interesting, especially yeah. from, well, it was kind of equal, men and women. I think men might have been something maybe felt like it was a jab or offended. And we talked about comparison in a, in a previous episode. Right. And I think that might have rubbed some guys the wrong way, where they thinking, well, who the Negro think he is? And now, all of a sudden, now I got to step up to the plate because my wife might have saw this. And now, because I've seen wives tagging their husbands. Oh. Ouch. Yeah. And and not in a I don't think it was maybe in a bad way, but if a husband who's open minded, maybe he would have looked at the post because there's plenty of things my wife sent to me that might address men. And if it's something that I need to work on, then I'll receive it. Right. Something I'm already right. doing, then I'm just like, eh, yeah, that was good. But yeah, I don't think she send me stuff out of well, maybe sometimes. It depends. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But not a passive aggressive type of yeah. Right. Right. 
And so I guess you kind of answered the question because I was going to ask, why do you think this post was met with so much resistance? But I think, too, if you aren't exposed to that. And here's here was my thing with the whole post. Like you say, Walmart, all these businesses, these companies, everyone has mission statements. Why can't we have a mission statement for a home? And I actually pulled that from Stephen Covey from Seven Habits of Highly Effective Families. I think it might have been for families instead of people. I don't know. It was one of them, too. And he got he got a couple variations of it. Right. Yeah. So he he talked about that. And 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 I read the book years ago. So when I read it, I was thinking this is very interesting. And he says a family mission statement. This is Stephen Covey. A family mission statement is a combined unified expression from all family members of what your family is all about, what it is you really want to do and be and the principles you choose to govern your family life. Now, I don't understand why would any man oppose that? Man, um, it's like if you had a job and everybody, y'all are working at a certain pace and somebody come in just, you know, trying to trying to do the most, <laughs> you know, you might be like, it, it, people, it's different, you know? Um, some people might be like, man, that's, man, that's cool. Some people will get more relaxed. And be like, well, shoot, this dude gonna do it anyway. I could ease up. And some people are like, man, chill out, bro. It ain't that serious. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, it's met with True. different things. So, I mean, just that, just the definition, the definition you gave for the author. You know, it sounds pretty, you know, uh, you know, detailed. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it could be intimidating to some people too. It, it forces you to really think uh, on those things. And people don't like that. People don't like mm -hmm. to be put out their comfort zone because some people may not, may say something simple. It's like, man, we don't, we, we love each other. It's a simple, like, because everybody has an iOS, like an internal operator system anyway. Like, so even if you don't put it on paper, you, you, you got it in your mind based on you, how you grew up and what you're supposed to, how you're going to operate and stuff. And all he's telling you is to put it on paper and, and get everybody's feedback so the whole family could be on one accord and stuff like that, you know? And uh, I just think it, it, it's actually a good thing, but, you know, like God, before God had the commandments, it, before they were written down, people knew what was right or wrong or what they, in their heart. And then they did that the 10 commandments made it more clear, or really it was more than 10, but the main 10 commandments made it all clear, but they still rebelled. Like, it, matter of fact, they just knew when they rebelled at that point, it was just written, you know? But it gave some others the direction, and um, but yeah, yeah. Mm, no, that's good. I didn't think about that from the Ten Commandments perspective, because uh, and it's I think it's really just giving you structure and order for your family. It gives your family a north star. Yes. So yeah. anytime that you get out of line with with the family, you can always revert back to your mission statement. Before we make a big decision, does this line up with our mission statement? If it doesn't, then maybe we need to reconsider some things. Exactly. And that's how that's what companies are supposed to do. That's what they say they do. And you know, a family is an organization. It may not be a for-profit, but it's still a group of people with their own personalities and free will to that have to come together to cooperate. That's how it's a corporation. You got cooperate, cooperation, mm -hmm. you know. So mm. It's good to have that thing. It keeps everybody not in check, but, you know, like if it's a value statement and one of us is missing that, that, that clearly tells us if we're off the mark or if we need to get back centered to what we need to do. You know, imagine going in somebody's house. You ain't got no mission statement and they family mission statement is like plastered on the wall. Fancy. You know, like you're going to be like, dang, you know, y'all got the first thing you're going to think is I don't have one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why. Because hmm. I have mine plastered on the wall. <laughs> oh, do. there you go. See? <laughs> Don't bring nobody in your house that ain't got one. They're going to be like, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, but think about this. Think about this. You could take this from either perspective. You can say either I'm glad I saw this. Maybe yeah. I need to step my game up. Or maybe I can be a hater. Right. Yeah. And, that, and that's depending on the person. And then yeah. if you're not with it, just be comfortable. Like, you ain't got to hate on the other person, but just, if that ain't your thing, that ain't your thing. You yeah. know, you ain't got to hate on that person, but, like, that may not ever be your thing. Mm -hmm. But, like, it, it's it, it's there for a reason. Uh, you know, do, do you feel like 
do you how you do you know anybody else that has a mission statement for their family and do you feel like it would help a lot of families if they did have one i feel it would help a lot of families and here's the thing because when i posted on facebook there was a lot of people or that wasn't a lot but there were some people who said they had a family a mission statement for their family and i was like that's what's up now, I don't know if they read the Stephen Covey book or not or wherever they got it from, but they decided to act upon it. So I think it varies from home to home. Um, yeah. Because for like for, for my family, like for us, our, our, our mission statement is. Is uh, love God, you know, serve, serve God, love family, create dope memories. Right. Mm. It's, like it's simple. It's yeah. simple. You know, so. You got to, you got to, it's one of those things, you know, you have to fall in line with one of those three. Create dope memories can be a bunch of things. Yeah. It can be from feeding the homeless to going to Jamaica. Yeah. Or, you or know? yeah, yeah. Like you said, yeah. Feeding the homeless, or watch, roasting marshmallows, you know, just, just, just creating, like you said, keeping it at the forefront to create dope memories together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, so it's, it's, it's serve God, love family, create those memories. And this is one of those things where you it, it can fall in one of those three. It's not nothing huge. It's just, that's just what it is. Serve God. What does that look like? You know, love family. What does that look like? So if it's not falling in line with those, then we have to reconsider some things. And like I said, I think it just can help keep us focused. So real quick, so you got the feedback, right? And, and not mostly there's a lot of feedback saying like you know to the contrary but there was a few there that said i got one you know so you know this is always the minority you know so in a group it's like that with anything you know there's very few people let alone families that take the time to do stuff like that mm -hmm. you know so you're always going to be in a minority in that group. but that's why it's like the 80 20 principle like you know 20 percent. you know it's just they just separates from the pack i agree because I heard a lady on Clubhouse, I was listening one day, and I guess we kind of going into the whole submission piece. The, the the host, the commentator, he said, why is it that women have a tough time submitting to, um, she, they'll submit to the dope boys, the, you know, the hardcore guys or whatever you want to call them today. I don't know what they call them today. Women have no problem with submitting to them. But they have a problem with submitting to the, the the skateboarders or the gamers, you know. Mm -hmm. So she, she he was like, "Why is that?" And she said, "Her answer surprised me." She said, "Because dope boys have a vision." And I was like, "Oh shoot!" She was like, "Our vision, the vision at the end of the day is we gonna get this bread." Now that's a it's a it's a big vision. It's very broad, but right, right, right. Th that's that's the goal. The goal is to get as much money as possible, opposed to saying and no knock against gamers or skateboarders or whatever your community is. There's no no knock, but this is just what I heard from the topic one at the, hand. One, yeah, right. And and that was coming from a woman, and I was like, man. So to tie this all in, how important is it for a man to have a vision for his family? Wouldn't it, and and this is why I say I think it's easier for a wife to submit when you have a goal, an end yeah. game. Yeah. Because you can say this for your job too. I mean, you can say this with your family. You can just be like, well, we work every day. That's it. But And that's why you see women who, you see on the movies, the women who fly to other countries strapped up with cocaine on them and doing stuff All for right. the dope boys. And they, right. they putting their life on the line because they're committed to and that's kind of extreme, but they're they're committed to the mission. Right. Right. They're committed to the mission. One of the uh, definitions I heard about the submission was, um, I'm not sure if he coined it or not, but I heard it from him. It was T.D. Jakes, I believe. And he said, submission, it comes from, you know, the, you know, the, the root word sub being under a mission. And you got to have a mission to come under. To, so there's no submission without the mission first. Right. So, I mean, and, and that's a definition that you could choose to adopt or not, but it makes sense. And I was like, that's true. Whatever that mission is. And like you said, mo it's not like the dope boy has a mission statement. Most of them don't. You know, you, you don't see at his house like, 
you know, blasted, like, sell, crack, do this, right, you know, and just, he just, you know, you just kind of, but the vision is there, you know, and you, you're doing it now, and some of them, you know, not, not some of them, not all, not all of them want to be ghosts for empire, but, uh, or power, but a lot of them do, and, uh, it, and, and people could buy into potential, you know, so some of them just see it, and, and then a lot of it's just having a masculine drive, you know, just mm-hmm. that hustler's ambition. Because skateboarding in a game is like recreational activities. Now, you could take it really serious. And some Tony Hawks, he made a lot of money skateboarding. Uh, he's not he's not like a common, like not everybody's doing making money skateboarding like him or have a video game that, named after him. And some people could become a cool game developer, right? So I just think for men, like, you know, like it's just having a very, like a core value of who you are, what you value, and, and trying to master whatever craft you're in. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, you know, building, a, finding a woman that appreciates those same things, and, and she would uh, submit to it or even add to it, you know, and, and help you in your dreams. Like rappers, right? Rappers, another one. You know, he could he can be tight or not. He's probably whack, but she like promotes his mixtapes and you know add his all his stuff and with some other girls too. And like you know, like she support him and hopefully he makes it. So, you know, it's just that driving that ambition. Usually they rapping about selling drugs, most of them, you know, but sort of kind of go hand in hand. It's that mm-hmm. vision, speaking, because you got a lot of people that their music is their vision board, right? Like, without writing it, their soundtrack to their mind is like American Gangster by Jay-Z or something. Or, you know, if you're in a Christian home, your mission statement may literally be the Bible. Like, you may not have ran it down, but you basically say we follow the Bible and that's what we do, you know? So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's that's interesting because I like what you said about the T.D. Jakes quote, because I think I heard that before. Mm-hmm. I think I heard him say that before. And I was like, that's that's a pretty uh, good definition. And I was also looking it up as well, because even on the Facebook post, people were sending me, they were screenshotting me definitions of submission. <laughs> they were like, look, mm-hmm. and, and there were there were a lot of women that were really frustrated with the whole submission thing. Now, when I looked up the definition, it's derived from the Latin word submitere, and I might be in the text, but it means lower, reduce, or it means yield. Now, when I thought about the word yield, I'm thinking when you're on the street driving and you come to a yield sign, it doesn't say stop. It just says slow down, Pay attention to oncoming traffic. So that way we can merge together. Mm, I, without, I hear you. Without I, any that, accidents. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so here it is. You know, let's just use your wife as an example, you and her. Your traffic is going one way. She's driving down the same street, but she comes to a yield sign. All it's saying is that y'all are going to merge together and flow in this same harmony. Mm-hmm. All, all yield is saying is pick your spot. Yeah. That's all they're saying. Pick your spot so there won't be any accidents. Yeah. I like um, that, man. I like yeah. that yield and merge. That's, yeah, that's a revelation. That's like, yeah, some of that is on the spot. I, I might have to. Oh, okay. Yeah, cause I, feel, I was like, man, that's dope because you're right. It's like not stopping. That, is, that means you ain't, it ain't meaning you just going to shut up. Like, you know, like, but you, because both people got to yield, like, because you got to yield the uncommon job, and then you, you know, just to avoid, like you said, collision and conflict, and that usually comes with two unyielding, like, one of them wasn't on board, like, one of them is putting themselves first and endangering everybody at the same time, mm. so I guess it's a real selfish thing, and not paying attention, and, well, I like that. Yeah, and I some like people... And check this out, Vince. Some people, it depends on who you connected to, because like you said, some people would just try to jump their lane in spite of the yield, just jump in the lane and take their little spot, right? They yeah. kind of play daredevil. I'm just going to take my spot. I know it's mm-hmm. his yield, but I'm going to take it. But then there's other people who might see oncoming traffic, even though they have the right of way, they see you coming. Some people say, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're, they're, it depends on who you hook up with. It depends yeah, on who you connect to. Some people might say, go ahead, because I see yeah. you. But then there's some people that say, I'm going to debo my spot and take it. <laughs> mm. Yeah, man. Now, that's true. 
That's true. I also got this very uh, generic definition that says the action or fact of accepting or yielding to a superior force or to the will of authority. Of an, I think that the word superior in there might strike them, right? Anybody who's on the other side, because superior must mean the other one's inferior, mm. right? So like, oh, a superior force isn't more superior than me, you know? So not every definition is, is going to imply what uh, the true meaning of the word is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, trust has a lot to do with it. You know, you got to really trust because there's no submission without trust. You know, rather voluntary or you got to trust something. You got to either trust that they got your best interest at heart or trust that they will uh, inflict what they say. You know what I'm saying? So like if a cop had his gun at me and want me to yield, I got to trust that he will shoot me. And he has, you know what I'm saying? Like I got to, because I got to, he going to make good on his word. Mm. You know, like I'm some submit. I try to get shot, or right. you know, on a, on, that's the negative side. On the positive tip, if, if I submit to somebody, and like if a doctor or something is prescribing me something or whatever, and, or just a coach is recommending something to me, I know is is good, and I, and I feel they got my good in, in heart. I will submit to their ideas because it's gonna help me in the long run. So it just depends on how you view that person and, and stuff like that. Mm, that's good. I like that. And then here's another one: when people say they have to submit their paperwork. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. People forget about that definition of it. Yeah, right. Submitting a request, submitting paperwork, yeah. It's a two-way street. Again, yeah. submission, it's a two-way street. I'm submitting because the one, one definition says to present for the approval, consideration, or decision of another or others. So I'm submitting this paperwork saying that I'm going to, if I want to take some days off of work, I'm submitting the necessary email or whatever mm -hmm. in hopes of approval that this is something that we're going to mutually agree upon. I need, I, like these, I need these days off. I just need you so we can be on the same page. Right. So the show can keep rolling that I'm not going to be here. Yeah. And it's then, not like you just not showing up. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm submitting this, you know what I'm saying? So, and like, and like you said too, you, you submit yourself to your doctor, you submit yourself to your boss. And I don't know why I seem as if submission is a, a big issue when it comes into the home. We submit to everybody else. Yeah, man. It, 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 exactly. When it comes to the home, I don't know where the disconnect is. It's, and that's just like a personal relationship thing. You know, you got to, just not look at it as this person is my enemy or, or you trying to one up the other person. Like, I like how you said you submitted it. And like, and sometimes you can't get the day off. My, you know, certain jobs have blackout periods where you can't take it off because the demand's so high. And it's a co-op, it's a cooperation. Like we, now sometimes certain employers are petty, but for the most part, they're saying no, because they can't function without you. They literally can't. So, or like some people already took the day off. You can't take, we, we need a certain level of manpower there. So um, it's just like you said, people coming together, being cooperative, submitting ideas, proposals, like rather it's moving here, rather it's going to this church or you staying at home and me working or vice versa, whatever it is, we gotta. And then like you said, back to the mission statement, if y'all got a mission statement, that's kind of a, a yield sign, almost like a serve as the yield sign. It's be like, hey, you guys, let, let's merge these ideas. Let's let's talk about it. Does it line up with our things, you know, that we put in place? Because if it don't, then y'all could be like, well, no, it don't. Boom. Yeah. You know, so, man, that, they go hand in hand. It helps. Yeah. I believe having a mission statement does truly help, like you said. Yeah, it, it has to be because there's nothing worse than a home that, in my opinion, that a home that operates in total anarchy, right? It's just, I do what I do, you do what you do. You know, and a lot of that comes from past hurt and resentment and pain and stuff like that. It's, I'm just do you, you know? Right, right. When, when you get to that place, there's some unresolved issues. Yeah, yeah, most of those people lose trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So submission, and, and here's the thing, and I, I think I put this on Twitter the other day. Some of my greatest blessings have come from me being submitted to another man and his vision because I understood what it meant to be submitted to somebody. 
So when I'm married or I'm in a relationship or if I'm in a, a position of power, I know how to treat people because I was in your spot. I mean, I'm glad you said that because people, um, everybody comes into some form where you got to submit to something. And you ain't just never, I mean, let me not use a blanket to say it, but I never ran across, you always going to be in that position even if you always used to be in top dog. There's a certain, somewhere, somewhere down the line, you got to submit to cooperate with somebody doing something. Exactly. And it's like that, uh, the, the, the uh, soldier, the general said to Jesus, um, he was in the Roman army, so I don't, I forgot his uh, rank, but he basically said, I'm in authority. And he, I got people authority over me and under me. So he, I, if I'm not misquoting it, I believe he said both. He's like, yeah, I'm in yeah. authority. There's people under me. There's people over me. So he understands both. Like, so he, and some people he tell what to do, and sometimes he get told what to do. But he knows how authority works. And like, you know, you, you he submits sometimes, and sometimes he gets submitted too. So, you know, you just gotta know both sides, and and, and just don't think you always just gotta be the one with the main idea, the main this, like. It's not always gonna be like that, you know. Like not somebody like you said, your greatest person. Like I don't get sometimes when I like somebody has to do the other part. Not everybody's meant to do the the whole thing. Because if that's the case, nothing will ever there will be no big things done. You know, you can't down the person that don't want to be an entrepreneur in the sense of they might be really happy in your organization and they might have found their place there. And without them, your organization won't be as good. So that so like they got it, but they, well, if they master their craft, they're so happy. Whether they're accounting there or they're your sales manager, whatever, you know. I'm not saying they can't spin off and do their own thing, but why if they if they happy? And so I don't know. Maybe that's a tangent, but yeah. No, no, I hear you because everybody's not fit out, and I think that's where we get the tunnel vision from. Everybody wants to be in. A, I, I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to use the term alpha male or alpha female. I don't right. want to jump into that because that's another one we got to yeah. do with a yeah. topic on that. But right, like you said, it goes hand in hand. In order for things to work, there has to be a healthy flow. You know, there has to be a healthy flow. I submit to you, you submit to me, and even you know, scriptural because people were coming to me about the Bible and all sort of stuff, and I'm like, look, Bible says submit yourselves one to another, right? Mm, yeah, one to another. To me, the most successful homes are when you allow your spouse to operate in the in the gifts and talents that they have. If you better at me than manage your money, that don't mean that I'm not in it. That just means you are stronger than me in that area. So I'm going to watch this. Submit myself to this area of finances. You might be a better parent than me or you might help me see something that I don't see. And, and I think people don't maximize their marriage. People don't allow their spouse to operate in their fullness because a lot of people feel that they got to be the top dog. No, if you let your spouse operate in their full capacity, if they love you, if they want the best for their right. family, they, they can only help but to put you in a better position because if your wife win, you win. Yeah, and that's how it's supposed to be. Right. Or, or sometimes they're confined to certain traditions and stuff like they, they they choose tradition over efficiency mm. you know like or roles so if, if it's like if, if the man usually supposed to handle the finances you know but she's like you said she could be better at it she's probably good with numbers she could be accountant who knows it'd be silly to have that to, to, to just head that alone because that's what you're used to or that's what you know where you could have that on her and it, but it brings everybody up because she's much better at it. And that doesn't take away from the other person, though. Like, the, the, like what you said, like, just because I'm maybe, and it, it's a conclusive, there should be something that's agreed upon. Like, people know where they're strong and weak at. And it, it, it's weird that, like, I, I, she's, out of consequence, my wife's way better cook than me, you know. I have my certain dishes that I make, mm -hmm. but I cook for survival. I don't cook <laughs> for taste. You know, I cook to eat. And then live another day, like you know, I don't make it cute or nothing. But if my family, if she can't cook, I'll do it. 
because like right. I'm, it needs to be done. I ain't gonna call myself the chef, and and, and you got other places where where dudes they they are a chef, like they take that serious. They barbecue, they 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 cook cook. You know what I'm saying? They're like, man, this is serious to them. So it just depends on what you value and where you at. And if you cook and, or if you like takeout, like just be and having a clear, like you said, going back to the mission, having a clear understanding. I think you should have an individual mission statement first, and then combine with somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, sometimes people don't get into their marriage, you know, and hopefully y'all can come together and connect it that way. But yeah, you gotta be mm-hmm. know who you are. I agree. I agree. Man, any closing statements before the end of uh this? segment because this has been really good man we can go on for days but is there any closing thoughts or ideas anything that you want to say to the people who's watching or listening man i think we covered it man like um that i like that i'm I'm always remember the yield merge analogy i think that's really dope and um and just and just knowing yourself and just knowing that you know in order to they said if you want to go somewhere fast travel alone but if you want to go somewhere far travel together mm. so like you might do something fast but you won't get far but if you with other people it might take a little longer but it, with other people you get further it, it takes a little more work you got to negotiate more you got to go through more stuff but it's better is when it's beautiful when it all comes together mm. man i like that that is good well you heard it here brave hearts community Make sure that you hit the subscribe button that you share this video with someone or even if you hear this on iTunes or uh, I guess Apple Podcasts or if you hear this on Spotify, leave us a well, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We would love to hear what you have to say. Leave a comment below as well. If you are watching this on YouTube, I am Sean Heineman. You can find me across social media at It's Scary to and Mary. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, right. You can find me yeah. everywhere. And then Vince, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Oh yeah, Vincent Fuqua, mainly on Facebook. And then um also um Clubhouse, Sound Off V, same name as well. And um, you know, the other half of Scary to Remarry, uh to the voice guys who remarried again and it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, you heard it here, Brave Hearts community. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. <laughs>